Well, it's been a season of uh, high drama and constant tension across the board for 10 or more teams facing the threat of relegation and Wolves obviously no exception. Fans at Molyneux feel like they're kicking every ball. This week, the club gave the chance to some of them to do just that. And some were better than others. Most were better than Johnny Phillips. If you're a Wolves fan, it doesn't get much better. A full tour of all the facilities, including a behind-the-scenes look at everything going on at the training ground. <laughs> Not to mention watching the first team train and then getting to do the same yourself with two Wolves favourites. Record scorer Steve Bull and recently retired keeper Matt Murray put these fans through their paces. We'll take it light because last year I took the warm-up last year. Uh, I took a 20-minute warm-up and we had to... Uh, Get St John's ambulance in <laughs> The multi-power sports food Legends Day is fast becoming a fan's favourite and it's easy to see why. Great atmosphere, you know, seeing the facilities at the training ground, absolutely brilliant. Two good lads as well. Two good lads, Steve and Matt, fantastic day. Came on the Legends Day last year and um, it was brilliant but even better this year due to the fact that the sun was shining. <laughs> Your football's not got any better. Definitely not. I had a couple of good players in my team but I don't think anyone would be uh, quite pushing to be uh, playing out there on Molyneux. One of my mates told me how special he was. I lent him Jarbo's boots but <laughs> I mean, he didn't do them any justice at all. He's the same size foot, that's where the similarities end. Back in then boys, back in! Murray still hasn't lost his competitive streak so was devastated his team lost out to bullies. But with Soccer Saturday in attendance, he laid down a penalty shootout challenge we just couldn't turn down. Three penalties then. He sent me the text <laughs> saying you're going to be here today. And I, I threw down the challenge. Really? How hard can it be? Oh! Matt Jarvis grabbed the headlines this week, being the first Wolves player called up since Bully over 20 years ago. You know, since he's come to the club, he's gone from strength to strength. Uh, obviously, we signed him from Gillingham. Uh, he's got he's got promoted with us, and he, he, it's no coincidence, you know, you know that he's got there's no luck at all. He he works every day in the gym and on the training ground. You know, he's always practicing his cross and his finishing and great goal against Villa. And then to get his call up is ah, uh, everyone, all the lads are generally absolutely buzzing for him. I've watched Wolves sort of home and away this season, and Matt Jarvis has been fantastic throughout against against all the teams. Really, he's done really well. So it, it's it's really testament to the hard work he's put in. It just shows the strength of Mick McCarthy as well, the players he brings in, you know what I mean, because he brings honest, hard-working players and uh, Jarvis is one of them and uh, I hope it now reflects on the other Wolves players to say, if we've got one England player, we can have more. Oh! Where is Matt Letizia when you need him, hey? Back at Molyneux, the legends relived some of their own playing and non-playing memories. I think when Steve Carica left, he left the club and the lads uh, stripped him off tied him to one of those like wooden benches <laughs> with all like uh, strapping and that and they carried him out into the middle of the Molyneux with all the corporate boxes full and put him on the centre circle <laughs> and the groundsman put the sprinklers on. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a good farewell for him. Is it a better team than last year? Yeah, definitely. I think he strengthened in the summer, but I think they've all pulled together this year. It's very, very tight down the bottom, but I, 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 you know, I think a few more wins, I think three more wins will, will seal it for Wolves. I think with O'Hara coming into the team, I think um, you know he's made a lot of difference. I think it was about the same time last year that the players started kicking in again and getting, again the results to keep them in the league, so if we can do that now in the last eight games... They got out of it last year. Um, there's some teams who've been dragged into it now who probably thought they were safe only a few months ago. You know, as we mentioned earlier, everyone's beaten everyone. To be, to be fair, on, uh, on paper, our run is decent. We do play the other teams down there, so it's sort of in your own hands in a way. Today's game evokes memories of one of the Wolves fans' all-time favourite away days. On New Year's Day 1990, they took thousands to St James's Park, many by plane. I've never flown and I have strived to the death. <laughs> my girlfriend bought me this ticket, I didn't know nothing about it. And the supporters were rewarded with one of the best individual performances they'd ever seen from you know who. There were 3,000 Wolves fans travelled up on Monarch Airlines and they all got there and it was snowy and raining, sleet and had all kinds of weather and uh, we actually went up there and, uh, and won four, and I scored four goals up there. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a great day to be fair. And if you need a penalty taker, will you have a word with Mick for me? Yeah, I'll have a word with Mick to say, make sure that Johnny Phillips gets nowhere near it. Absolutely bottled it, I couldn't believe it. Fortunately for the fans, the manager won't be calling anytime soon. Good man. <laughs> the job is a football reporter and not a player. I think he's a reporter anyway. Um, sorry, Johnny. Um, i just tell you that Javier Hernandez is on at the start of the second half for Manchester United. Uh, so they're... Uh, um, 
trying desperately to claw about this 2-0 deficit. They did so at Blackpool, of course, earlier in the season where they won by three goals to two after being two behind. Uh, let's just talk um, Wolves have got to Newcastle this weekend. And um, surely they, they go there in, in good form, in great form, to win at Aston Villa, but of course they go there as well without Kevin Doyle. Uh, and I saw McCarthy this week said that Sylvain Banks Blake was taking his place, said he's got to play as well as Doyle, simple as that. Easy to say, but not so easy to do. No, it's not easy to do. Different players, different characters. You know, Doyle's the type of player that just keeps making the runs, doesn't always get the ball. He battles away, he scraps away, never complains, just gets on with it, even if he takes a good kick. He wins uh, a few free kicks out up the pitch and it just gets him that pressure relief from, from the defenders, Jeff, and he's good at it. He banks Blake, on the other hand, for me, is probably more of a runner. He'll want to run into the space he's in behind. He's thinking more of playing in the shoulder of defenders rather than being a link-up man. And I think because of that difference, I'm, I'm surprised. I mean, I know sometimes I've I gone a bit Fletcher, but I think when he paid that money, Mick, I think Fletcher's more a Doyle type than Ebanks Blank, uh, e Blank is. And because of that, I think Thank it's... It's, it's one of those situations that I, 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 I'm surprised by the choice. Sorry, Merce. Merce, who was Charlie talking about there? <laughs> Blanket. What, 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 what was his name? <laughs> Silvanks Eubank Blake. <laughs> 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 right. Anyway, without Kevin Doyle, Wolves have won three of their five games. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, it's a decent record. And he makes Blake has got more goals than Kevin Doyle in the Premier League this season, mm. from less yeah. appearances, I guess, yeah. as well. So it's, it's not all doom and gloom. It's interesting that Mick decided to name his team yesterday. Was that just to, you know, show how much confidence you got, yeah. give them a bit of a boost? Uh, yeah. I would have thought so. Uh, yeah, for sure. And I, it's always, I used to enjoy uh, knowing on a Friday that, that I'd be in the team uh, the following day, uh, to mm. be honest with you. It's, uh, it's good. You can. Uh, get yourself you know, properly in the right frame, Mike, because there are occasions where sometimes it was up in the air and uh, I think it's nice to take all the doubt out of your mind and, and focus 100%. You'd have always expected to be in the team, wouldn't you? Oh, not when Ian Bramford was the manager. <laughs> oh, right. <yeah. laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. I couldn't run around that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they go to Newcastle. Newcastle